So busy, right? Lots of lots of stuff going on in here. You look at all the pieces of tissue. So this is a vascular lesion, right? Multiple big dilated vascular spaces that have variable thickness walls. Some are thin walled, some are a little thicker. There's a lot of fibrous stuff around them. So when we see these big dilated spaces, we call them cavernous spaces because they're large like a cavern, right? And so again, cavernous hemangioma or venous malformation or just benign vascular malformation would be a totally great thought for what we have here. Additionally, we have blood that is beginning to form thrombi and in this case this thrombus actually has been here for a while because you can see it's starting to be perforated by small vessels just like we looked at in the case of Masson's tumor papillary endothelial hyperplasia so this is that same process just a little earlier this is organizing thrombus here fibrin thrombus and note the difference in color between the pink fibrin and the bright red of the erythrocytes sometimes blood packed together like so at first glance may look like a fibrin thrombus, but when you go closer, the color is different. And also if you flip your condenser, you can really see in each individual red cell, even when they're smashed close together with, uh, if, especially if you flip the condenser, you can see, oh yeah, they're actually individual red cells there. It's not fibrin thrombus. This is fibrin thrombus with organization. So we, right now we're at vascular malformation or cavernous hemangioma, whatever you like, with some organizing thrombus. Ooh. There's more organizing thrombus. Oh, look, look. And it's starting, just starting to make a couple papillae. See, it's, we caught it in the act right there. We see it in the process of making papillary endothelial hyperplasia, aka Masson tumor. Look, oh, right here, you can see it also. See those vessels that are kind of dividing up this fibrin? They're beginning to carve out little chunks of fibrin. Now, if you see this pattern in the dermis, then you really have to think about angiosarcoma or capacity or a few other things. If you're seeing individual collagen bundles in the dermis getting wrapped by invasive infiltrating endothelial cells, that's concerning. But here in the middle of fibrin thrombus in a big cavernous vascular um, lesion, no problem at all. So really the context matters a lot. But what's this? Calcification. So what happens is sometimes thrombi, particularly big thrombi, um, they can calcify and we get what's called a phlebolith, right? Like a thrombus stone. So, and you can even, when they're big enough, you can even see these on x-rays or little tiny specks of radio opacity in the middle of a, of a soft tissue lesion. So that's kind of cool. So what is interesting about this? Well, now it gets a little different looking over here. So we kind of have a biphasic lesion, right? We've got a lesion that has big cavernous areas that look like cavernous mangioma with some thrombi and calx. And then over here, we have a more cellular zone. And the more cellular area is composed of more spindled endothelial cells that have little compressed, I hate to say the word, but slit-like vascular channels. If you're having a bad day, it could remind you a little bit of capacity sarcoma. The, the appearance with practice is actually relatively different, I think. But they, the compressed thin channels that look kind of slit-like and have blood in them with spindle cells in between do bear some resemblance to capacity sarcoma. But capacity sarcoma, the almost every case I've ever seen that's been in the skin at least, is in the dermis. It may involve the subcutis, but I never see like a nodule of subcutaneous or intramuscular capacities. At least I've never seen and I'm sure there are people who've seen a lot more capacity than me, but I've seen quite a few cases. Um, I have seen it in organs or lymph nodes. That's a different story. But in the skin, it almost always is a dermal process at first that extends later on, maybe further down. But when we, what we have is these slit-like spaces, spindled endothelial cells, also some kind of more plump, rounded or epithelioid almost endothelial cells. And I'm looking for the one last thing I want to show you. May not have it in this case, but hopefully we will. Well, can't have everything anymore. Oh, that'll do. See this couple little vacuoles here? They look like tiny little fat cells. So those are actually not fat cells. Those are endothelial. Let me move that pointer out of the way, see if I can get the light better. Those are endothelial vacuoles. You can have vacuoles in a variety of different 
vascular lesions, particularly when you have epithelioid endothelial cells, more rounded endothelial cells, they seem to be more inclined to make vacuoles. But in this lesion, the vacuoles have this, this kind of striking resemblance sometimes to clusters of little fat cells. And I've got another video on this entity online that has this. So when you put all of this together, this is called a spindle cell hemangioma. And these are a benign vascular neoplasm. And they uh, have a tendency to be multifocal, like within the same you know, limb or extremity, like the same region. And so early on, people call these spindle cell hemangioendothelioma. Um, my mentor, Sharon Weiss, was uh, the co-authored the, the kind of landmark paper on this entity in the early or the mid 80s. And then later, though, they went back and, and looked 10 years later and none of the patients had any sort of progression. And so they realized that these are actually not you know, and hemangio endothelial, they're not intermediate malignant potential. They're truly benign, even though they can be multifocal. And because of their multi multifocality, they all often arise inside like blood vessels, like, you know, they can grow out of a, the middle of a vein. Um, so they can be multifocal. They can recur. If I recall, this case had been seen uh, quite some time, years previously, another biopsy at the site had been done or close to here had been done and called, I think, cavernous hemangioma. And I actually, I think, reviewed that specimen. It had very minimal of this stuff. And it was only on when the lesion recurred. Um, it had some multifocality, which looks concerning clinically. But when we looked at it, I said, oh, it's a spindle cell hemangioma. And it actually, these are totally benign. And it's normal for them to be multifocal. And that does look scary. If you do a scan and someone suddenly has, you know, a couple different spots of a vascular lesion, that makes, you know, the, the treating physicians worry that maybe it could be malignant. But it actually is a totally normal Phenomena. So I often add in my comment that these do tend to be multifocal and they can recur, but they're not aggressive. So you don't need to do like a wide local excision. You just follow the patient and if they recur and it's bothersome, then you can remove it again. And so the last thing that kind of board spotter for this is, so spindle cell mangioma is related to Mafuchi syndrome, which is a germline mutation in IDH1 or IDH2 genes, the isocitrate dehydrogenase genes, which are uh, Krebs cycle enzyme, if I recall correctly. And um, those patients develop multiple cartilage tumors in their bones, uh, and chondromas that are benign, but they also have a higher risk of also developing chondrosarcoma, malignant cartilage tumor of bones. And they tend to get a lot of enchondromas in their hands, which are, can be quite deforming. And in addition, they will get have a tendency for getting spindle cell hemangiomas. Now, the spindle cell hemangiomas I've seen in practice, except for I think one case, all of them have just been sporadic. Um, not syndrome associated. And usually if someone has Mafuchis, it's already known that they have Mafuchis. So uh, because of the bone problems, uh, so the finding a spinal cell mangioma, I don't usually put in the report, oh, screen this patient for Mafuchis because I think usually they will probably already know that the patient had Mafuchis well before they got their spinal cell mangioma sample. At least that's kind of my current thinking. So um, these lesions though, even when they're sporadic, they usually have mutations of IDH1 or IDH2. And um, I think this case actually, because of the confusing clinical scenario and history, they wanted um, to have it tested and, and uh, I sent it off and it was uh, mutated for, I believe it was IDH1. So that was a nice confirmation. So uh, kind of interesting and benign lesion uh, and uh, that biphasic nature of the cavernous channels and then the more cellular spindled zones with those little mini vacuoles that look like little mini fat cells and the flevoliths, the calx, if, if you find them, they don't have to be there. All those features together are, are good for spindle cell hemangioma.